Hey everyone, Darren here from the Music Vault. Sitting around, don't have to work in the morning. Watching videos on YouTube. And I figured, this hat's getting old, I gotta get a new one. And I figured I would do a video. I have been having this rattle around in my brain for a little bit. And you can tell by the title. So I was trying to figure out what the top five, not ten, but five, cliches of heavy metal. And um, I figure like when everybody looks at heavy metal, these are the things to me that people think of right away. Um, and... They're not in any order, um, and these are. This is just my list. This is what I think of when I look at heavy metal. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a band that I think kind of best really represents, like what I have in my collection, best represents that topic. Uh, first up would be politics. And I find that a lot of, like, grindcore bands, some thrash bands, a lot of thrash bands, actually, um, speed metal bands from back in the day, back days, politics was a big thing. Um, corruption, uh, religious corruption, um, governmental corruption, um, just a lot of unsavory uh, aspects of life and government and for me i think who <laughs> kind of sums it up best is napalm death this album is called um util utilitarian and like to me this is a grindcore but to me napalm death kind of solidifies you know political like stances um, I don't know. I could be wrong, but again, Napalm Death, this is my list. This isn't yours. You might have a completely different list. And this album actually is on purple vinyl. Really cool stuff. But yeah, to me, um, Napalm Death is kind of like a political juggernaut. Uh, I find it because Grindcore has a lot of punk, hardcore punk uh, influences. And with hardcore punk, um, you know, being po very political, it's... Uh, next up, I find that when people look at heavy metal, they think of politics and swords and sorcery and and um stuff like that you get a lot of that in power metal ronnie james dio um had a lot of imagery like that swords and sorcery and magic and all that and to me who best sums it up blind guardian uh this is beyond the red mirror this is i think yeah, 2015 release. Um, it's a gatefold. Now, I like, I love Blind, Blind Guardian, but I love their album covers. Um, this one is on like a red and black starburst. Really cool stuff. I but I love Blind Guardian. Um, I have a, quite a few Blind Guardian albums. Uh, but when I when I hear Blind Blind Guardian, like right away, I think of like Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, um, sorcery, magic, all that kind of Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing. You know, stuff like that. My third one, when. Ever you think of heavy metal or you see somebody 
that is got that's into heavy metal and I was one of them long hair I mean yeah there's some country guys that have long hair um, some hippies a lot of the hard rock bands but heavy metal when I was growing up every band every guy had long hair now this is forbidden this is probably an original pressing on combat records standard black nothing to but i mean if you look at them all they all got long hair um all you guys out there that were in metal bands um can attest some of you guys still have long hair me myself i don't have long hair anymore because i have a picture right over i got a picture kicking around down here with me with uh long hair you know your bangs in your face and my hair was down to about here at the time um yeah i i cut it all off because well i had used to have really long wavy hair and now it's becoming quite the beach so there's no sense in having long hair <laughs> um next up number four when you think of heavy metal, you right away think of leather and studs and handcuffs and bondage and whips and stuff like that. Just like old Rob Helford here. Um, yeah. Oh, hold on, I'll show you the back. Even motorcycles, bikes, but you get the the leather and 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 studded wristbands and the studded everything. I mean, even some of the black metal bands. Well, most of the black metal bands you see, like there are a lot of bands that still wear it, um, still have long hair that still wear it. Um, you're having a lot of bands now uh, nowadays that that don't. The t-shirts and a, and a you know, pair of jammers and pff, up the stage they go. Um, some guys don't even have long hair. Some guys have shaved heads. Some guys are bald now. Um, long hair really isn't kind of like a staple in heavy metal. Whereas when I was a kid, it was. Like the, the standard look for a metalhead was a black leather jacket, skin tight black pants, all the way down tapered. With Converse high tops, you had your long hair, everybody smoked cigarettes, um, drank beer. Um, yeah, like, it was fun. It was fun. Like, that's just how it was. Like, you had punk rockers that had safety pins in their ears or their nose. They had big mohawks. They had bright colors, studs, uh, chains. Uh, they wore boots and... You know, suspenders was a big thing, like, off. So, like, every musical style has their, you know, like, country has cowboy hats and crap. And rap is just crap. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, and number five, and this is the big one. Lots of bands have this, this imagery or, you know, they sing about or stuff. I don't particularly care for this end one, but that would be Satan. A lot of metal bands, especially black metal, some death metal. Uh, this thing about Satan. Um, to me, that does not define heavy metal um, because you have a lot of good Christian bands. So religious kind of um, lyrics and stuff like that, but on the whole, like the 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 um, the influx of Satan bands back in the early early days, even before Striper, you had Venom, Merciful Fate, Bathory, um, Hellhammer, a lot of these uh, these bands like that's what their shtick was it was singing about satan some of them like king diamond are a little bit more um into their 
um, what they sing about. See, King Diamond with the upside down crosses in the ears. Um, yeah, so you had a lot of that. Um, I don't have a lot. Like, this is the only Merciful Fate album I have. I bought it off a friend a number of years ago as part of a package. Uh, and this one came with it. Um, I don't have a lot. A lot of bands that sing about Satan, like, directly. I have some bands that sing about Satan, that they're Christian, and they sing about, you know, the Satanic influence in that. But it's from a Christian point of view. Which is, you know, everybody has their shtick. I mean, I know guys that have, well... That are Christians, and then they have everything in their collection. I have a couple of Venom albums, uh, two I think, Possessed and From the Depths. I think it is. Um, but yeah, just that's what they sing about. That's what they sing about. Whatever. Um, it's like anything. It's like TV. You can shut it off if you don't want to listen to it, and that's what I do. If you listen to it, great. If you don't, even better. But uh, you know. So, anyways, that is. Uh, my take, five cliches of heavy metal. Um, an honorable mention for a sixth one, Motorhead. Whenever you hear the name Motorhead, you think of right away of heavy metal. Um, I know Lemmy always used to say uh, we're a rock and roll band, which is true. But they were probably the most well-known heavy metal band uh, of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Metallica's up there, big. But Motorhead, whether you've never heard their music, Motorhead is a staple in heavy metal. Hands down. You can't get away from it. They influenced everybody from um, Metallica to Gorgoroth and every metal band in between. Because, I mean, they're Motorhead. So... I guess for me, a sixth cliche of heavy metal is Motorhead. Anyways, you guys have a great night, and uh, I've wasted enough of your time. I'll talk to you guys next video. See ya.